Hi, I'm Don Moore. I'm a professor at the Haas School of Business. These are uncertain times we're living in, creating dilemmas for people in roles of leadership about how to communicate, how to handle the uncertainty that all of us are trying to deal with. We're not sure what's going to happen. Others come to us to ask for information and for guidance about what's going to happen. Because of my research on confidence, I've been getting questions about how to communicate uncertainty, how to make rational decisions in these uncertain times. And I have a few thoughts that I'd love to share with you. By the end, I will have uh, talked about the value of communicating well-calibrated confidence, being honest with yourself and with others about what you know and what you don't know, how to credibly communicate that uncertainty, avoiding the temptation sometimes due to pressure that you feel from others of being overconfident or claiming more confidence than you deserve, and how to think rigorously about the uncertainties and probabilities that you face in these complicated times and how to use those to make wise decisions using expected values. So the challenge that, that lots of leaders face at this time has to do with the communication of uncertainty because so many people will look to us to provide clarity. And you may, be, you may feel pressured to, to feign confidence that you don't actually have. You may be concerned about the hypocrisy implied in claiming to be confident about something where you aren't. And you may be looking for ways to communicate that uncertainty without undermining your credibility as a leader. Some thoughts on that. So it is undeniably the case that the expression of confidence is inherent to the effective exercise of leadership. That people look to leaders to express confidence, to provide assurance, to provide information. And that in many circumstances, there are contests for leadership in which the one who expresses more confidence is more likely to earn credibility, to earn votes, to earn investments, to attract employees or customers. And so you may feel a temptation to express more confidence, perhaps more confidence than you think the situation merits, and hope that you can get away with it. There are certain types of confidence expression that um, are easier to get away with than others. For instance, um, vague claims about um, the future, expressions of intention, uh, a confident body language, that sort of thing is more likely uh, to um, be interpreted as confidence and to earn you credibility with an audience. Um, you will note how often politicians provide vague confident assurances saying things like, um, we'll come back stronger than before, or um, the economy is going to be in great shape, or we're going to bring back coal, without specifying exactly what it would mean to succeed uh, in delivering on those claims. So um, if you're concerned that you're getting overconfident, uh, uh, vacuous assurances from someone in a position of leadership, what I would suggest to you is ask for uh, more specific, um, testable claims, and perhaps invite them to uh, put their money where their mouth is by asking, want to bet? Or to make some uh, verifiable guarantee. So um, someone, a uh, 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 business with which you're, you're um, establishing a contractual relationship promises that they will be back up in operation by uh, the end of April and they'll be able to deliver the services that uh, you are gonna be paying them money for. If you're not sure, you would like to get specific contractually about what it means that they're gonna be uh, be able to provide, when and how, and what the penalties are going to be for their failure to deliver. It happens often that we deal with others who say, who try to give us vague assurances, oh, I'm sure it's going to be fine, don't worry about it, 
if you're uncertain about that, if you think that they be, may be overconfident in their claims, I would encourage you to get specific. What is it that they're offering? What is it that you need? How can you verify whether they've delivered that and what are the penalties for their failure to deliver that? When someone else, someone who wants your allegiance, who wants your money, who wants your vote, says, promises something that you're not sure they can deliver on, you should feel free to ask, want to bet, and offer a bet that they should be happy to take if they believe what they're saying. You should think about the claims you make as a leader in those contexts. If someone offered you a bet on the claims you were making, would you be comfortable taking it? If not, then you, by making this confident claim, you run the risk of being exposed as a fraud. And if you hear my advice and think, well, how am I supposed to get credibility with an audience, with customers, with employees, if I can't provide confidence in what I'm saying? I have a solution for you that comes from some brilliant research identifying the credibility of leadership communications and the circumstances under which it is most effective. First, I would urge you to avoid predictions and platitudes. Don't pretend like you know what's gonna happen in an uncertain future like we face today. Don't pretend to have answers that you don't and be willing to confess uncertainty about the things that you don't know for sure. The alternative to false certainty is to honestly convey the uncertainties that you face. That often means expressing your uncertainty is a probability or in terms of a probability distribution. The least credible leader communications in uncertain times like this is to say, I'm not sure. You confess your uncertainty by saying, I'm not sure, and then provide some prediction as if you know. Like, I'm not sure, but we'll be back in business by the end of April. No, you want to pr provide a probabilistic estimate of an uncertain outcome. Can you know for certain whether you'll be back in business by the end of April? It depends on so many other things. The progression of the pandemic, government uh, shelter in place orders, the state of the larger economy, whether um, your employees get sick. You can take those inputs and use them to inform a probabilistic judgment having accumulated that evidence and analyzed it with a clear head you can communicate in a way that is more credible and more effective by saying something like i'm confident there's a 40 percent chance we will be back up in operations by the end of april to open by noting your confidence is to say i've thought through the evidence that we have we can't say with 100 percent certainty what's going to happen by the end of April or when we'll be back in business. But given the information that I've got, I think a 40% probability is about right. That communication honestly conveys the uncertainties inherent in the situation. Anyone listening to you, anyone who comes to you for information has got to know that there are uncertainties on the horizon and that you can't provide an ironclad 100% confident prediction. But to note that you have gathered and analyzed the relevant data and that you have formed a useful conclusion taking into account the stuff that you're uncertain about. That 40% probability number is very helpful for helping you and others think probabilistically about the uncertainties that you face. The future is inherently uncertain and honestly communicating that uncertainty makes you more credible and your leadership communication more useful. It's worth thinking about the different types of uncertainty that you face. One type of uncertainty is aleatory uncertainty, which is illustrated by a roulette wheel. There's chance out there in the world that you can't predict and that's, that no person, however well-informed, could perfectly anticipate. At the other end of the spectrum is epistemic uncertainty. Uh, something like the outcome of an election, where if only you knew enough about the preferences of the electorate and how they were going to vote, you would know who would win the election. 
And in between, there are things that are somewhat aleatory and somewhat epistemic, maybe something like the, tr the path of a hurricane, where if you were a hurricane forecaster with enough information, you could specify with a fair amount of confidence where the hurricane was likely to make landfall, but that there were complexities that would uh, um, make that certainty less than 100%. You can confess uncertainty about both of these things, both epistemic and aleatory uncertainty. You can reduce epistemic uncertainty by gathering more information about the world and reducing the um, what's left to aleatory uncertainty. But there will always be some irreducible uncertainty left in important business forecasts, things that even if you had all the information you wouldn't be able to resolve, that are best thought of as the spin of the roulette wheel, where you can just make smart bets on a probabilistic but uncertain future. And that gets us to the topic of rational, making rational decisions in an uncertain world and the fundamental value of thinking in probabilities because it helps you compute expected values. And at the very heart of rational decision making is selecting the option with the highest expected value. Expected value is simply the value of an outcome multiplied by its probability. When you face choices about when to try to open your office or how long to try to pay your employees when they can't come to work or when to anticipate the scale up of your business operation or when you expect your customers to come back, you have choices to make between different courses of action and you want to pick the course of action with the highest expected value. Often it's easier to figure out how valuable or costly various outcomes would be. And the hard part about confidence and certainty is thinking about the probabilities associated with those outcomes. How sure are you that you'll be back in business within a couple months? How sure are you that your employees can hang on and that they'll be available to come back to work when you need them to? Estimating the probabilities on these fundamentally important inputs to your decision will help you make wiser decisions in these uncertain times. So I've encouraged you to think rigorously about probabilities and uncertainty, to make the best estimates you can of uncertain quantities that influence your decision making. Use these as inputs to expected value calculations, to communicate well-calibrated confidence to your employees, your customers, your investors. Thinking honestly about the uncertainties inherent in the world is useful for your own thinking and for communicating credibly with others. You can retain your credibility as a leader and stay true to your values, remaining honest when you communicate with confidence the probabilistic uncertainties that are inherent in the business futures that all of us face. These are difficult times, scary and uncertain. We don't know what lies ahead, but we can make smart choices in the face of that uncertainty and take actions to protect ourselves against the greatest risks that we anticipate. Wash your hands and stay safe. <laughs>